You see, I am a simple college student living alone in an apartment. I was very enthusiastic about the release of Pokemon Heart Gold slash Soul Silver here in the States. I have purposefully locked myself out of all media and the internet aside for school purposes. That means no 4chan, no V, no Bulbapedia, etc, etc. As I was very busy with the school year and being poor at the time, I wasn't able to buy Soul Silver on its launch date. After my school year ended, I ordered Soul Silver on Amazon. However, it would take a week for it to arrive. I decided that during that time, I would replay my Crystal version on my Game Boy Color. However, I realized that long ago, my mom threw it away because I told her my save went dead, and I was very upset about it then. She also threw away my Silver version, so all I have is my Game Boy Color. As such, I set out to GameStop and bought a used silver version, as it's the only Pokemon game left that they have for the Game Boy Color. $10. Fairly cheap. I went home and started it up on a nostalgia trip. However, that's where things started to get bizarre, and most likely the reason why you read this. The Game Freak logo started up as normal, but it just froze there. I thought the cart was just errored or something, so I turned it off and on. The same thing happened. I tried pressing A and start over and over, and all of the buttons. Eventually, the logo vanished and there was a blank screen for about 5 seconds. Suddenly, rather than going to the usual menu screen, I was already in the game in a previous saved file, which was odd as I was expecting all these carts to have been wiped by the poor battery. Either way, I wasn't complaining, as I would have chosen the continue option to see what the previous guy did anyways. First off, I checked the trainer information. His name was just dot dot dot. He didn't really have much originality. I checked his profile and apparently he had 999.99 hours put into the game. With all 16 badges, 99,999.9 Poke Dollars, and all 251 Pokemon on the Pokedex. Seeing as he apparently had Mew and Celebi logged also, I'm guessing he either used a Game Genie or was a really hardcore Pokemon player back then. I checked his Pokemon to see what a badass team he has. To my surprise, he has five unknowns and a sixth Pokemon named Hurry. I'm thinking this must have been some cruel joke by the person who last played this game, but I decided to check the profiles to see those Pokemon anyway. As expected, they were different letters of unknown, all level 5. I was a bit shaky with my unknown alphabet at the time, but I identified the words spelled out to be Leave. As for the sixth Pokemon, it turned out to be a Cyndaquil. Mind you, this was before there were individualized Pokemon icons. The Cyndaquil looked normal, but it was level 5 with only 1 HP left, with only 2 attacks, Leer and Flash. I don't know why they named him Hurry, but at the time I just disregarded it. The most eerie thing was that, despite my volume being at max, none of the Pokemon he had said their usual cries, just pure silence. Having enough of the team, I closed it. I was parked at what appears to be a room inside Bellsprout Tower. However, for some reason, there were no NPCs around. Even more eerie was that the pillar in the middle didn't move at all, as if just leaning on its side. There was no music at all. There was no exit or ladder. Or at least I thought there wasn't. I walked around for a few minutes but can't seem to find my way out. This was certainly not a room I've seen in the Bellsprout Tower before. I tried checking my item for an escape rope but the bag was completely empty. There wasn't any wild Pokemon either. Finally, I managed to find a ladder, which turned out to be behind the pillar. The screen turned black and the music finally started playing. I had a sudden chill, as I recognized that melody I heard to be the theme you hear when you listen to the radio at the ALF ruins, where the unknown are at. I immediately realized that it wasn't a loading transition, but rather I was in a dark room and would need flash. Before I took care of that though, I immediately checked my Poke Gear to change the radio to something more pleasant. But it turns out that there was no radio card, or even a phone, nor time cards. There was only a map card in which Gold, dot 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 from earlier, and I will call him Gold from now on, was just walking in a midst of black. I recall that Cyndaquil has Flash, so I turned off my Poke Gear and made Cyndaquil use Flash. I didn't see any message saying, Hurry has used Flash, or anything like that. The room just became lit just like that, and I soon regretted it. The room was a chilling blood red, with a linear gray path leading south. The ladder that I had used to go up or down was not there at all. I had no choice but to head south. The screen got darker every 20 steps I made, until I finally made it to the end, which appears to be a sign. 
I read the sign, which said, Turn back now. Suddenly, I was asked to answer yes or no, but there was no question asked. I chose yes as I do not know what it was asking, but the screen went black again, making a ladder climb sound. The unknown radio music stopped, and in a few seconds was replaced with the not as creepy pokey flute radio music. I was in another dark room, but I held my breath and used flash again. Suddenly, it said that Hurry has fainted, which was odd since I recall that there was no status conditions like poison on him, and I clearly wasn't in battle. I checked my Pokemon quickly and suddenly he's no longer in my party. In fact, after a bit of investigating, none of my Pokemon are there, but instead all replaced with level 10 unknown. I did the same thing as before and spelled out the unknown. My then team of unknown spelled, he died. Either way, after the creepy change, the room was lit to reveal myself in a very small room that appears to be only four squares big. The walls of that room were gray bricks, as if I was inside something that was hollowed out. Outside that room appears to be a bunch of graves similar to the ones in Pokemon Red and Blue. I walked around the small room and pressed A, but nothing happened. I've already concluded that this clearly was a hacked game, and some sadistic fuck sold it to GameStop. However, my curiosity kept me going. I checked the trainer profile of dot 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 again, only to find out that the sprite of gold was missing his arms. He also seems to appear less smug, but rather seems more sad and empty, in a way that I do not know how to describe. For some reason, it also now said that he has 24 badges, which was clearly impossible. After a few minutes of aimlessly wandering, my character suddenly spun and did the escape rope spinning animation. Instead of flying up though, my character spun downward slowly, as if sinking. After that screen, the music stopped. After finally landing, the overworld sprite of gold is colored differently now. Instead of the usual red color he dons, he appears completely white now, including his skin. It's as if he came straight from the colorless Game Boy games, placed into a colored background of the Game Boy Color. I checked his profile, and now, while now is as white as his overworld sprite, he lost his legs, and has what appears to be bloody tears from his eyes. It also says that he now has 32 badges, which now starts to disturb me, as this change of number seems to represent something important. I also checked my Pokemon, which this time contains 5 unknowns and a level 100 Celebi without a nickname. The unknown are this time leveled 15, and spelled out dying. I checked the Celebi's profile. It was a shiny Celebi, except there was only half of the sprite. One leg, one arm, one eye. It only has one attack, Parish Song. The area I was in itself was the Sprout Tower, with the immobile pillar as before, except everything is apparently red now. I walked north for what felt like forever. Eventually, I finally encountered some generic men and women NPCs, they were all lined up to the side, just facing the long, slantish pillar in the middle. They were also white, and nothing happens when I try to speak to them. I kept on going north until eventually the pillar family appears chopped off, with a transparent red in that spot. I went up to red, and without even pressing A, I was suddenly engaged and finally in a battle. The music starts again, which it sounds like the unknown radio music again, but played backwards. Gold's battle back sprite matches his front one, with the bloody eyes, white skin, and lack of arms. While red sprite was the same as before in GCS, except transparent. The text simply said, wants to battle, as if he has no name. And both of us only have one Pokemon each, which is weird as I swore I had six with the unknowns. My shiny Celebi came out, conveniently with half a sprite for the back sprite also. The shiny noise and animation was different and the sounds it made sound like multiple screech attacks used consecutively. Red sent out a seemingly normal male Pikachu, except he is level 255, and his sprite seems sad and has tears in his eyes. Rather than the usual fight, item, Pokemon, run menu, I was only given the option to use the attacks. Since Celebi only has one, I chose it. Naturally, since Pikachu was level 255, he went first. Pikachu used Curse, lowering his speed and increasing his other stats. I'm not even sure if Pikachu could use Curse. Celebi used Parish Song. In three turns, both Pokemon get KO'd. Not like I have a choice. At this point, it didn't even go back to the fight menu, as the battle just continued without me. 
Also note that there were no animations at all for some reason. Pikachu used Flail, which didn't do much damage despite his level and boost, as his health was maxed. Celebi used Perish Song. Nothing happens as it was already used. Pikachu used Frustration, which did a shit ton of damage, knocking Celebi down to less than 10 HP. Celebi used Pain Splint, which surprised me as Celebi didn't even have that attack in the first place. Now, Celebi and Pikachu have about 150 HP. Pikachu used Mean Look, not like that did anything. As expected, due to the effects of Perish Song, my Celebi fainted. Except in the text, it said, Celebi has died. And instead of the ordinary drop off the screen animation, the Celebi back sprite just vanished. The Pikachu was still up, and even with Perish Song, it didn't count as my loss. Pikachu used one more different attack beyond the five attack limit. Pikachu used Destiny Bound. Afterwards, it said, Pikachu has died, with a slow fade out animation. Apparently, I was the winner, as the transparent red sprite showed up and said, Dots. At that point, I just freaked out, as that transparent red sprite was suddenly beheaded, leaving nothing but his transparent body. The battle then ended at that point, and faded out along with the music. I'm back in the overworld, with another change to the gold sprite. He's now as transparent as Red's overworld sprite. I quickly check Gold's profile, where this time the only thing remains of him is his head, with a transparent skin. His head was zoomed in a bit, showing a black void in his eyes. It now stated that he now has 40 badges. I then backed out and checked my Pokemon. They were all level 20 shiny unknown, which when spelled out read, no more. I was at what I now know is next to the end. There was apparently no music playing, but for some reason I felt like something was there that could be heard. I was back in my room in New Bark Town. Maybe finally I get to play this game properly, but who am I kidding? I knew that sadistic fuck must have done something. I walked around my room to interact with things, as I'm a bit afraid to go downstairs to see what was awaiting down there. Note I said, walked, as while the background was moving, Gold was not moving his transparent limbs at all while doing so, just floating like those ghosts you see in Diamond and Pearl. As expected, the radio, computer, and TV did not work, so I had no choice but to go downstairs. I ended up in the same lower level room of my house. Everything appears normal, except mom isn't home. After failing to interact with anything in this room, I decided to go outside. To my surprise, that door leading outside at the south didn't work and instead I just walked straight through it to a void. I continued moving south to see what the fuck was going on. My house vanishes as I head south into the void. It was creepy as when I entered the void, the outline of gold's transparent sprite turned white, to contrast with the pitch black. Eventually, I reached a white area, and gold's sprite turned black and transparent again. I continued south without thinking of stopping at all. After a long trek south, I finally encountered something. It was Gold's regular sprite. I talked to it. He said, Goodbye forever. Notably with a space in between the forever and the dots. And vanished. As that happened, it said, Question mark used nightmare. Which at that point, I would not deny that being possible. Gold did another escape rope animation spinning slowly downwards like before. I'm now back into that small hollowed out room surrounded by graves earlier. Or at least I say I was back there, but there's no sprites anymore. I tried to walk around, but nothing moved. Not even wall bumping noises. I checked my trainer profile with absolutely no gold sprite left. It said I had zero badges, and all the pictures of the Johto gym leaders at the bottom were replaced by skulls. I checked my Pokemon, which were all level 25 unknown. As expected, it spelled out a phrase that I dared to read. I'm dead. As soon as I went back to the overworld, the room I supposedly was in was then covered with the same blocks as the walls. I then figured out what exactly that room was when the final text was said. R.I.P. Dot, dot, dot. That room was a big grave surrounded by other graves. Gold has already been dead 
He died presumably a few years after he defeated Red. He was a young trainer who, despite his efforts in collecting so many badges and attempts at becoming a Pokemon master, was still unable to avoid the inevitable fate of death, and his efforts were eventually forgotten by the next generation. I was unable to escape from that text no matter what I pressed. I tried resetting the game, and the same thing happened. At which, I then finally decided to give up on that horrible nightmare. After that experience, I will never look at the gimmick unknown the same way again. They say that only the first generation have folk tales and legends, but the second generation have shown me how unpleasant the truth can be. I eventually enjoyed Soul Silver immensely, but I still can't unthink what that rigged game has told me.